Welcome back to the GSL Code S. Pyun has advanced in first place. The fitting of a world champion. Now we have the loser match. Deer versus Rogue. Uh, both these guys have been slightly off the radar. Rogue a little bit more. Like, Rogue had a good VSL. Deer, he did make it into SSL, you know. Uh, but we haven't seen these guys at their peaks recently. Uh, right. A rogue kind of uh, you know came off to a little bit of a, a flashy uh, performance for Jin Air back when Pro League was around. He was mm -hmm. a very solid player for them uh, there. But uh, ever since, it's been a uh, you know a little bit incognito. So uh, making it to the GSL Code S round of eight would certainly be a great way to step back into the spotlight. Yeah, it, it certainly would, and I think that this is the road for him. I was expecting the loss against Bjorn, and I think it is possible for him to take out both of these Protoss players, but Deer keeps telling everyone that they are underestimating him. A lot of the people uh, that, that play with Deer say that everyone's underestimating Deer. This guy is always capable of putting out a world-class game. Mm -hmm. Uh, will he be able to do that tonight, though? Hero already really looked better in PvP overall, I gotta gotta say. Definitely uh, tooled him quite easily in that first series of the night. And now he's got to show how good is his Protoss versus Zerg. Well, a lot of really cool strategies to try out. Our first map will be Newkirk Precinct as we get into our uh, losers Boy, match. One of these players will be eliminated. Let's find out who. And here we go. Our blue Zerg player. He is Jin Air Green Wings, Rogue. All right, Rogue, another one of our sleepy players, kind of like Ty. <laughs> Always looks like he just kind of leans his head back, so like yeah, macroing and stuff. <laughs> our Protoss player, Deer, rocking the gold border. Yeah, he is a champion. Don't forget yeah. that. Yeah, he's definitely the best player in the world at one point. You tell Can kids these days that, that again. guys like Jock G is a champion. They're like, no. I'm like, yeah, yeah no, you actually seriously. was just like super <laughs> sick. Thanks for coming down, man. You're a superstar right now. <laughs> yeah, you're on TV. You're more hey. famous than we are. We're not on TV. Mm -hmm. We just get our voices on TV. Well deserved, too. Well, I um, think I think it's better for all, both of us this way. We have our voices on TV instead of our faces. Yeah, Imagine well, they if don't, we had you to don't want my face like in the bottom right or something while I cast. What if we were like that pop-up guy that does the uh, ASL translations? Oh, yeah, like... Uh, Oh, you mean American Sign Language? Uh, yeah. I thought yeah. you were talking about StarCraft 1. I'm <laughs> like, what? <laughs> this is the only appropriate way to use that? ASL when you're not talking about Brood War. Well, unless you want to say, like, wow, this group is crazy ASL. Like, as hell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, like, oh, three to one in Rogue's favor, actually. That's I interesting. I did not expect that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have guessed that if you had asked. But luckily you didn't. <laughs> But then I <laughs> gave it up anyways. Ah, oh, damn me. Um, okay, so... You had one job, Artesis. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, it's a Nexus first. This is a pretty quick three base out of Rogue. Uh, nothing too crazy is going on. Nexus first is making a little bit of a comeback right now, for sure. Uh, and I think a big part of that is Protosses are good at holding early Zerg right. cheesy play, like early pools and stuff. And Zerg mid game has become extremely strong in this matchup. Mm. And let me let me talk about that for a second. Yeah. Um, Baneling Hydra is a bit of a problem for Protosses right now. We really saw a resurgence after the Adept patch. Uh, Adepts were already starting to do less damage. Zerg's got better at defending against them and natural flow of the meta. But uh, at this point, you don't see. Well, let me let me reword this. Uh, adepts, adept openings basically would force roaches for a long time. Mm -hmm. So if you fo force a roach warren, the game kind of goes normal, and Protoss is like pretty happy with it. But if you can't force that, oh god, it looks like we're gonna have a very quick drop. If you can't force that, then Bane Hydra comes out, and Bane Hydra is really deadly. You kind of hit before Protoss has good splash damage, and like you know, adepts and zealots both really die to Bane's hard. So that's kind of the state that this this matchup has hit in a lot of ways in the mid game, but right now uh, <laughs> Rogue doesn't want to get to that mid game. 
Oh, Rogue will wow. scout this out. Almost perfect timing on Zing, this Overlord. It will get in position and be able to drop, but there is only one Stalker here to defend as these Zerglings get right on top of it. Yeah, he's not going to be able to take that down right now. Needs to keep uh, that wall completely closed as well. Zerglings picking off that Stalker very, very quickly. Uh-oh! Oh, he pulled the Zealot out of position for a second, but Rogue got it right back in there. Zealot will eventually fall, and that will allow a flood of Zerglings mm. inside Rogue's base. Ooh, this is going to be a very tough one indeed. They're going after this pile and going after the gateway as well. That is a ton of Zerglings. They get right in side on top of everything and even with an oracle i don't know if he's going to be able to really clean this. that is a lot of zerglings artosis drones trying to drill all the way through but they can't quite glitch it out as much as they would like to now oracle is going to start cleaning all of this up the pylon that is overcharged will be able to stay alive there's more zerglings coming through the overcharged pylon just oh. barely falls yeah and now the oracle doesn't even have energy it's oh, just sitting there so many artosis. probes have fallen the saddest oracle, the little oracle that couldn't. <laughs> He's not going to be able to stop all these Zerglings from flooding through. That pylon is out of there, and mm. with it, possibly, Deer's hopes of winning this game. Yeah, this is already too much damage with these links getting here. I expect a GG out of Deer momentarily. He's still making oracles, so trying to make something happen, but 25 probes against three hatcheries for Rogue right now. Not looking so hot. Yeah, that that good old lose 27 probes at the five minute mark strat. Mm. Mm. Not not one you want to go for. And uh, there's still even more zerglings denying mining here in the main. Yeah, it, you know if oracles didn't run out of energy, maybe there would be some sort of shot here. But uh, not only is he having to use them to defend, but even when he if he finally defends everything. He's not going to have any energy to go for a counter harass. To, to, to be fair, we're tied on workers right now. So there's 18 workers apiece. If uh, if uh, Deer does stabilize here, he won't be in like the worst position. He just can't mine from his main. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think it's it's like what's so tough about this is that with the three hatcheries already up, the production of workers is going to explode for Rogue. So right. like, if these guys do transition to a normal game, all that Rogue has to do is defend against Oracles, right? And he can he can kind of do whatever he wants from there. Oracle holding on that front door. Adept shading into the main, but they're not tight against the Nexus. You have some more support from on high, but these Zerglings will take out almost every single mm. uh, Adept. And look at this. He continues to try to break. In fact, even more Lings being made. It's kind of crazy how many Lings he is committing to here. There's about four Oracles out right now, a decent amount of Adepts, even some Zealots being mixed in. And more Zerglings being dropped into the main. Wow, Rogue just really not letting up. When is when is the time to stop, Artosis? Uh, well, I think he's decided that there is not a time to stop. Okay, <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's 12 more Zerglings on the way. Yeah. We actually saw something kind of like this in yesterday's ASL uh, games, mm. where it's like you, you have half your units inside the base and half of them outside. You know, when do you decide mm. to, uh, to pull back? Well, uh, the answer is not yet here for Rogue, still in the base, trying to get this mm. damage done. Well, these tactics are good. Like, every time the Oracles turn on, he just runs away and tries to use up that energy. This is a lot of money that's been putting these Oracles, and they are not holding on. And he brings them down to the front here to try to break through this Zealot in the wall. He gets in with all of his links. Three Zealots and two Adepts doing a pretty good job against them. Uh, yeah, we'll surround all the Adepts. They will fall. Now the Zealots getting taken out next. Too many Zerglings here. And finally, nothing here to defend for Ro for uh, for Deer. Yeah, that's a ton of damage. Those Oracles oh. trying their best to work up some energy and help to fight. Only one gateway does get that overcharge up. But the economy of deer is just so small. You know, and yet, Artosis, and yet, they're still exactly yeah, even on workers. That is true. This is almost comical, but in the end, Rogue will just have too much to take game number one against deer. All right. Well, uh, Rogue definitely uh, pulling the trigger there and getting super ridiculously aggressive with all those Zerglings in the drop. Wow. And I can't really blame him for doing something like this. Some of these Ling All-Ins are very strong on these maps that have a very wide ramp to wall, but also a lot of top-end Korean Protosses are actually pretty weak to Zergling All-Ins. Like, just watching their play, a lot of times they're just a little bit greedy. They aren't really, truly crossing every T and dotting every I, you know. Uh, there, there are some some things they do to cut corners to try to get damage on the Zerg player more quickly. So Rogue really hurting Deer in this first game and not looking so good for our Protoss player.
one game all that stands between Deer and uh, uh, Defeat. Um, so uh, Rogue looking very strong, kind of a unique strategy. I don't think we've quite seen that. and Maybe Deer didn't know what to expect, but game number two, a Fight. chance to make it up. Here we go. Fight, and shall burn. In our cloud of fire we stand. Fight, we start war. Game number two, our Zerg player, he is. Jin Air Green Wings, Rogue. Up one game in the series. This time we get a chance to go to Odyssey. Really glad that we get a chance to see this map, one of our new ones. Mm -hmm. His opponent, our Protoss player. Deer. There go those cheers getting louder once you uh, are down in the series. Yeah, well, you gotta cheer loud if you're yeah. to win. The uh, good what opening, good opening by Rogue, by the way. Like that kind of hides his strategies too. Yeah. Right. Like we don't know for sure what Rogue has prepped. Like, is he going to be a Hydra Bane guy? Is he going to be a Ling Bane into Stormhost guy? Hell, is he going to use an older style? Is he going to try to go Mutas? We don't really know yet. Yeah, and to be to be fair, he did go three hatcheries very early in uh, mm -hmm. game number one. He didn't know he was going up against the Nexus first. Mm -hmm. Um. Looks like we are going to have a gateway woven in there before the Nexus this time for mm -hmm. uh, for Deer. So at least uh, prep preparing a little bit more. So he'll be able to get some of these uh, really gateway units out reasonably quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping that we can see a bit of a longer game, not necessarily just a Ling all in once again. Would like to see what the rest of the night might look like through... Uh, more of a mid-game play out of Rogue or even like yeah. And Ooh, Okay, one. all right. Let's see what this hmm. is should, going to be. Should be a Stargate. Yeah, I would expect that. Uh, I've seen a lot of double Oracle uh, starts. Not necessarily all of them mm -hmm. proxy, but uh, especially going to be cool because this gold base will be where uh, third hatchery is going for Rogue. Well, you know, people have it so mapped out when to make spores that if you proxy the Stargate and they don't scout like your main they'll probably just assume an oracle in there right mm. and then your oracle gets there right before spores are done and uh definitely something that can be powerful um i you know i would imagine the spores will not be finished when the oracle gets there unless he scouts this <laughs> straight up well overlord will see what looks to be a normal wall at the opening mm -hmm. overlord very slow so it's not going to make it deep back into a deer's base to see this and already the uh, uh, Stargate going to finish here. Yeah. Uh, that gold base, by the way, is like really <laughs> that's something that could pay off for Rogue big time. Yeah, if you scout the third and you don't see a third and you just send your Oracle into the natural in the main and that gold base just gets to mine for free even mm -hmm. though there are dangerous Oracles out, I mean that uh, sounds like a good deal to me, Artosis. Oh, certainly it does. Look at this. The Lings are actually getting a full scout of the main base. So does he throw up spores immediately? Let's see. Because he doesn't see a pylon. Like, there's a pylon yeah. missing. Look. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now he's even checking back here, making really sure. Okay, spores get started. Uh, still, that Oracle is maybe going to get into one of these bases right before. Yeah, uh, one of the spores is slower than the other. So if he goes to the one that has the slower spore building, maybe there is that mm -hmm. opportunity. Chronoing out now a second Oracle, just like we expected. And uh, he is going to get to the base where the uh, spore will finish just in time. Yeah, looks like... Uh, not a lot of damage with the Proxy Gate Oracle so far. Maybe if he finds that gold base, it'll help out. Uh, this, I feel like he was cost, costed maybe a couple drone kills, two, three drone kills by sending out that original Adept. Because then he couldn't stop the Lings from getting in and scouting everything. Okay. But Rogue might have had that up at, in the meantime anyway, so not too much to speculate about there. Does he know about the gold base? Uh, no, he has not scouted that yet. Wow. So yeah, that base is just up and mining, and uh, I feel like sometimes you really just have to respect your Zerg opponent to possibly go for this opportunity. Mm. Right now, uh, Deer can't really afford to get up there and scout that out. He's defending his uh, proxy Stargate from Zerglings that will now be running across the map to pressure this third Nexus from coming up. Yeah, the Oracle's actually flying north to deal with those. It's too bad that he's not actually finding out about this gold, I guess. Like, I'm surprised he hasn't scouted because he's scouted no third, yet he's taking his own third. So he must know, right? Like, but no, these aren't walking towards that gold. 
Yeah, if you see I'm his, confused about the way he's playing this. I, I think he's just... Uh, maybe he understands that it is there, but doesn't, you know, mm. decide to go for it. Um, even still, he's going to get the shade off here, but uh, these Adepts are in a lot of trouble. Going to lose one or two. Shade will finish. Actually only loses one there. Mm. Yeah, Phoenix out. Going to chase around some of these Overlords, but he's done no damage to the gold. So the economy right now of Rogue is really, really nice. Mm. He is definitely mining quite healthily on a very small drone count. And that's nice, <laughs> man. I mean, that's that's where you want to be at. He's already able to get his economy in a kind of ridiculous spot, taking his fourth base at the moment. Layer about to finish as well. Perfectly ready to defend against these oracles. We'll be able to take out that proxy Stargate as well. And so, okay, congratulations, you got a uh, creep tumor. But these Zerglings running through, just really punishing this undefended third. I'm gonna send those Adepts down right now. Let's see what tech building uh, that Rogue throws down. Slayer just finished. Hydralisk Den it is. Have we had a Baneling Nest? Yeah, I don't believe so. He really needs to get that down. Baneling Speed takes a while to finish. It certainly does, Artosis. Uh, as if on command. No! Traitor Zealot! Ooh, that hurts right there. Oh, no. This is going to be several probe kills. and There's no overcharges here on any of these pylons either. So it's just going to take Zealots to clear out these Zerglings. So many dying there in the main. Even with Oracles back in base to clear up, there's going to be like 10 drone kills here. Yeah, this is really, really bad for him to lose this many probes right now after not really doing any damage early yeah. on against Rogue, who also got a quick gold base. Everything right now is just screaming a Rogue victory. And I hate to say this so early on, but uh, if you look, right, if he starts bailing speed the second this finishes... Oops, silence. There it is. Da, da, da. Okay, so that's really... I mean, this is pretty quick. You can actually hit with a, high, a good amount of Hydras and Banes on the third base uh, with both the upgrades done before eight minutes. He'll probably hit a little bit after that, but still, this is going to be so fast. And Will Deer have enough, especially after losing that many probes? Yeah. Now, uh, just the other day, uh, we got a chance to see what this uh, very, very similar... A uh, game between, I think it was Neeb and Scarlet and WCS uh, uh, Yong Chiping uh, qualifiers. Mm -hmm. It was uh, sa almost same exact situation. You take a little bit of losses early on as Protoss, and uh, you're just trying to stabilize, and then the Zerg hits you with one of the most effective all-ins in the game. Yeah, it's it, like Bane Hydra is, there's not like a true counter to it right now for Protoss. Um, no, no Protoss Pro ha at least has shown one as of yet. You try to get your size stream, you try to live, get some good storms off. And hey, when you actually start hitting some good storms, then you can deal with it. But it's that little window where it's like you don't really have a lot. And, you know, like for instance, look at this right here. If Rogue was already in position, uh, Banelink Speed is finishing. He could be hitting seconds from now. Instead, decides to play this a little bit more defensively. Mm -hmm. One tiny Zergling scouting this Warp Prism coming through. These are Hydras in position uh, to catch this out. Oh. Will they catch it? Oh! oh. One or two shots away. Mm, Taking that it out. That's crazy right there. Uh, Psystorm is about to finish. He's trying to buy some mm. time with these harassment units around the map. The, uh, the Lingbane Hydra look, looks like it's moving towards the fourth base area. I think he should be able to get a pretty easy cancel there. Uh, yeah, definitely. Especially since so many of these uh, stasis wards are uh, not there to protect that. Here comes this Bane, or uh, well, I guess fewer Banelings, but lots of Hydras and Zerglings pressuring that fourth. It's definitely not going to come up. And now we get a chance to see Ooh. where Rogue dedicates his army. It looks like he's pulling back or n not <laughs> pulling well. in the middle. He's got a, looks like an Overlord full of Banelings right now to drop upon everything. Another base being taken at that upper right location. Lurker Den on the way as well. So definitely teching up, not really uh, being as aggressive as maybe he could be with this unit set. But still, he's doing a pretty good job overall, I'd say. Here we go. And there we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Not as effective, really good to, uh, defense. Very on point. But you do have to continually uh, be that good at stopping it. Mm. And uh, Okay, congratulations. You killed an overlord full of uh, Banelings. Now you have to deal with a lot of Banelings and Hydras and everything else just running straight mm. at your face.
All right, it looks like he might get a cancel over here on this base. A lot of the units being drawn down at least, and now he's going to hit the actual location oh. he wanted to. Ooh, good stasis wards. The cannon's definitely driving him back quite a bit as well. Oh, my God. Side storm kind of funny. <laughs> uh, yeah, storm over all the units that can't take mm. damage. Uh, still more stasis wards out there, but that, I don't want to say lucky because he was very well prepared, but a very uh, effective stasis ward. Yeah, yeah, th that's one of the main ways you try to defend against these early on, but eventually it will wear off and you'll get those banelings back. Still so, yet ooh. a few more zerglings running through, pressuring for a cancel at this fourth again. Yeah, this is a little bit tough right now. Uh, not able to get his fourth base up, and he's playing this Charge Archon High Templar style. You really need quite a few bases with it. It's not like a three-base death ball composition. You're you're definitely trading <laughs> units nonstop. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> Normally people do this with one Zergling, but we see a whole group of Banelings just setting off every stasis Oh, work. Artosis. Ooh. Those are a lot of Lurgers. Literally so many Lurkers. Yeah, what if fact. he attacks in while they're morphing, though? That would be a big move. And the Lurkers do take quite a bit of time to complete morphing. Looks like they're just about to finish. Ooh. Finish, they do just in the nick of time. All right, another attack coming down to this third base location. Can he continue to defend it? It looks like all of his stasis swords, or almost all of them, are gone. Indeed they are, there's only one more defending that will get popped very early, only three Hydras locked down, but it looks like that will be good enough to secure this third base once again. Yeah, some good solid defense so far on the third base at least, right? We've seen Baneling drops, we've seen an attempt at a bust. He hasn't been able to get his fourth base up, but at least this third continues to mine. In the meantime, it looks like uh, Broodlords is going to be the next order of business mm. for Rogue, which is exactly how you counter this type of unit composition oh. that Deer has. He's going to have his fourth base canceled again mm. as he moves out across the map, not turning around to defend that. And here come those Lurkers. Ooh, he only has one uh, High Templar, by the way. So this is going to be pretty hard to get through all this without a lot of splash. Just the Archons adding that extra in. Oh my god, so many spines just skewering those first few Zealots. And it looks like there are a lot of Banelings up on the high ground looking to come around for a flank. Those were not looking to come around for a flank. Uh, Banelings running right into Archons. Pretty effective trade. Now unburrowing, moving the Lurkers forward as the Banelings crash down from on top of the ramp. Lots of great barrier uh, shields there from mm. the uh, Immortals, keeping them alive for quite a while. But finally, there are just too many Banelings. The Hero's army get taken out. Yeah, the Banelings helping to clear everything out. A lot of Lurker spikes as well. And GG is called Rogue 2 O's Deer. Take deer. that, Aligulac. One yeah. game for Rogue. It was Deer's Army, not Hero. I think I said the wrong Protoss player. But yeah, really insane games for Rogue. Uh, reading the builds perfectly, both Game 1 and Game 2, both busts really effective. Yeah, he played very nicely. Uh, some strong ZVP play overall. And Deer just not strong enough here, unfortunately. Uh, people were talking about him maybe being one of the weaker players in the round of 16. From what he showed tonight, I don't think he played weakly. I think he played no, he played no. well, but this is a tough group. Uh, it certainly is, and I think it's appearing a little bit tougher than maybe other people have uh, you know, thought. That's going to take us to our last game of the night, guys. One of these players will advance. It's Rogue versus Hero coming up next.